Hey, it's Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And it's Wednesday, it's March 2nd. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And I thought I'd start out again by showing you the daily chart. Still just more of the same. We're still just kind of going sideways. Another inside bar. Notice that uh, I'm pretty sure we didn't make a new high there. That was 43.99, and I believe we had the same thing. Oh, we made a tick higher there. I'd call that still... And of course, this is the midline on our uh, envelope strategy. So and people always ask me what these lines are. This is our envelope strategy. So if you're interested in learning more about that, go to the website and look for our envelope stuff. Um, but basically, we're still going sideways. We're stuck between the support and the resistance here. And... Um, we are making higher lows, not by much, and it looks like we are making a higher high again, not by much. So I just call this basically sideways. So I just think we're kind of stuck in this sideways stuff until the market kind of figures itself out. And obviously, if we were to have anything, any kind of bad news, I think we could probably drop quickly. But uh, I would say this market wants to go higher, but it's having a hard time doing it. So we'll just have to see where we go from here. We're definitely are out of the oversold. We were way into the oversold here and you can see we're now we're back closed almost to the midline. So uh, we've got room to turn down and have some room to trade lower, even if we don't test these lows here now. So uh, we'll just have to see how it goes, but I just wanted to give you a look at this and kind of show you that we're still just kind of chopping sideways. The market's really hung, but hung up between Forty-two sixty-six or so up to about somewhere I would say around forty-four hundred, somewhere in that range between forty-three eighty and forty-four hundred. So those seem to be the resistant levels, and uh, this seems to be the support down here. Although this, the lows are getting higher each day. That's a that doesn't. There's not a much difference there, but that's telling us something that. Prices really are trying to go higher here. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I did want to show you the daily chart first. And uh, let's go over to the 2000 tick intraday chart. And we'll go through the trades and wrap the day. Okay, here's my look at uh, 2000 tick chart. And as you can see, uh, it looks like we had a spike in channel up. Early on, it like we may be in a range. But we pushed, it took a few minutes to push through this um, through this price level right here around 43.50 or so but once we got on through there the market continued really we just kind of went sideways the last couple of hours of that pretty much after lunch we just kind of went sideways um, but overall this was an uptrend day and this is where we're meeting that resistance up here uh, basically um, on the daily chart at the midline so that's that's what's going on up there and if you look across here that's pretty much where we got to the other day and that's one of the daily bars there as well and so but yeah this looks like a spike and challenge to me and that's the way i played it i have the blue one on here it doesn't really help you a whole lot let's let's just tame that down a little bit maybe even a little more So, it really, you needed to play the shorter term stuff here. Uh, but this would have kept you in the ball game. Once we bounced here, I drew it off these first couple of swings. And once we bounced right there and confirmed that, you can see we, run, we ran straight up to the other side, exactly where the line is. And you can see it playing off this midline up and down through here. So, I believe that to be it. But I, I believe you also had to play um, these shorter term trends and channels and so forth to uh, come out on this th to figure this out so uh, or really not really to figure it out but to hone in on the entries so to speak and there's not a lot of them today especially this you know late late morning uh, there's a couple more in the afternoon but there's not a lot of trades today even though we had this uptrend you still see we've just got this Huge run up and a huge run down, a huge run up, another run down, run up, down, 
up. And it still makes it difficult to trade. And so you got to be real careful and you got to draw these short term trends and trend channels and, and you pretty much have to abide by them. Also, uh, notice we had this first leg up. And so our second leg up was just basically the highs here where we looked like we were going to have a range day. But you also wanted to play. Uh, and you can see that's about where we went to. We went a little past that and we bounced around that a while before we went higher. So, uh, but there's also a shorter term, two legs up right there. But that was the measured move I was shooting for early on. And we met that pretty quickly. And then it was kind of uncertain after that, to be honest with you, until we finally started trending. We, Even though we broke up out of here and shot up, we just didn't continue trending up. We just kind of chopped around almost downward there into the close. So that's the big picture look. But let's zoom in here and go through these trades and wrap the day up. Okay, like I said, early on this looked to be a range. And let me just back. And you can see we're just kind of chopping back and forth. We'd started trending up here. Uh, I didn't draw this, but I probably should put this on here just to clarify this. You can clearly see this trend working higher here. And then you get to close outside a new high. And we tried a few times to go higher. And 7 o'clock came actually on the actual entry bar here. But notice that you got a second entry when prices broke below that green bar. Uh, this is not a good enough signal bar to enter on the second entry. But notice that this is a uh, double top here. So that's a new high. And you got a first entry, second entry. So there's two legs back to the EMA on the second entry. So it's a failed second entry long, which would give you a reason to go ahead and enter there on the second entry, even though the signal bar is not very good. So if you wanted to take that trade as a failure, if you're a little more advanced, obviously that's more advanced and you need to know what you're doing to do that, but uh, it's there if you want to take that trade. And notice we made another new high and then you get another uh, move up here and Technically, the reason, look how bearish that signal bar is. It actually broke higher than turned and went out the other side and closed very bearish. And it's only a first entry. But the reason I, I mark this one a possibility of green, because if you, you can clearly see two legs down there. And so on a bigger picture, that's going to be a failed second entry. Again, that's even more advanced. So I usually don't try to mark these trades and talk about them, but there wasn't. A whole lot going on here early this morning, so I thought I'd point that out. I had time to point it out and talk about it. I like that trade. Uh, I don't know if I would enter it on the engulfing bar, but when it closes that bearish, just, I mean, you got plenty of room to get out here, and it's probably headed much lower, and there might be a trend line down here that it's headed towards. So uh, you can clearly see that midline in play right there. And of course it does it run that's the first close outside this channel we don't even really confirm this channel it just it's just two legs and then a move to a new low and then we reverse and then you get a nice reversal on the um off the lows here too notice you bounce you come up and you get a first first entry short and then you run straight on up through the ema and you get a second entry short and it it actually breaks lower and turns it goes back up and closes on its high uh, I like going long there. The, uh, the only reason that I made that green and not blue is because this next bar closes an inside bar and it's got an equal high there. So technically it looks a little congested, uh, although you do have this trap. If it breaks higher, you're probably going to get a, at least a scalp out of it. So I like it, but it, it's definitely a little aggressive. So um, if you didn't, if you didn't see that trade or take it, I don't blame you. So um, we run on up. We overshoot this little, this looks like a little short-term spike in channel. So this is a, pr and that doesn't look like it. Um, I talked about this in a post on the forum today. When you see bars that just keep going higher and higher and higher like that, it, and with very shallow corrections and lots of stems on both sides, that looks like congestion. But in reality, that is a spike up and a very strong trend channel. 
and it's so strong we actually overshot it and then you get the correction um, you were so far away from the EMA is the only reason I believe you got that big bar and then notice how you just you can't get any corrections and just kind of going sideways back to you don't know the trend lines over here at that point but if you draw it it turns out to be there uh, just draw it off those first two swings once we make that higher low there I don't think you want to enter in this congestion because this technically is sideways where this, even though it looks sideways, we're moving higher. And so it's a little bit different. Uh, there is a higher low right here, but you, and you did push through there. So you, you know, and that confirms that trend line. That's very tempting, but it's an inside bar. And so if this would have made a little break lower or something, then turned up, maybe you take it, but I don't think you want to enter that trade the way it sits. And then, of course, once it breaks out, it runs all the stops for everybody that tried to get long here and probably still some of the ones holding on over here, hoping that it turns back down. Uh, but it runs up quickly and runs stops. And then notice you get a new eye here and you go long. You get a first entry and then you break lower there and turn back up. And when it breaks higher, that's a second entry long. I mark this green because you don't really have this trend line confirmed. Um. Uh, but the odds are, if this yellow channel is correct, we're going higher here. And I like that. It's real close to being blue. And somebody will say, well, that looks a little like congestion. But you don't have the no-bodied bar in here. It's just kind of like a, it's, it's just a second entry, a little two-legged correction. But the market's pretty strong and it can't correct. And really, it's trying to get, it can't get back through that midline. And that's a double test of that midline. And it rockets straight up. And you actually pull back and get another second entry long. I didn't mark this one. Uh, again, this is an inside bar, so it doesn't really qualify. Uh, it is right at the key entry point. It is a second entry long. It is two legs back. Uh, there's some reasons that you might want to risk that trade. but And you might look at this as a double bottom, and then that is a failure. And if you did, then you could actually justify taking that trade. But I'd still give it a green. It's very advanced and very uh, aggressive. And it could easily fail on you. So, but notice we push on up, hit the upper side of the channel, and then we're heading lower. You actually get a failed second entry long here, but it's all still above the EMA. And now you've got this channel coming down in a break. So it could just go a few ticks and trap you and turn up. So I don't like going short there. I think it's too early, as strong as those two legs up were. And notice that we did get a little more than a measured move, and we, we actually. Notice how that turns out to be support or resistance there. Uh, but we drop down and it shoots right back up. Uh, unfortunately, you don't really get a chance to go long with it. But then it makes this double top up here and gives you the, it breaks higher above that bar and turns down. And you've got a ways back to the EMA. You, you're not really looking to ride this all the way back down. That was kind of a surprise if you ask me. Although the yellow channel has played out now. Uh, you still don't expect that to happen, but that's such a nice signal bar. And it is a second entry short. Notice you're working up and you get a first entry and then it turns higher again. And then when it breaks lower there, it's a second entry short on a double top after we've had two measured legs up. And being that far away from the EMA, it's probably coming back. So I didn't draw it because uh, that's the attempt at a retest. But if you draw the little channel, you can see it plays out. You're running up, you get a close outside, move to a new eye, and it turns down. A lot of times I don't draw the retest moves. You can see here I didn't draw them, until it, and then it fails. It just, I think it just kind of helps you cl more clearly see the ebbs and flows and the trends if you don't draw these on the uh, retest attempts. But anyway, this thing... This turns out to be the trade of the morning. This thing just rockets straight down. If you could, if you just happen to catch this one trade off that double top, I mean, that's that's probably all you need for the day, especially if you get that runner. I mean, that's a, believe it or not, that's a 27-point move. Easy, 27-point move. So if you get 10 or 20 points out of that on even just one contract, you did pretty good. But you get a close outside a new low. Um, you actually get a second entry short here, but not a good, uh, nothing you can trade. Then it runs up and you get a second 
third entry, but not a very good setup. And then you get a lower high here, which would have been a great setup, but you don't, but on my chart, there's no signal bar. You can't enter on that. That's just, I mean, that's just definitely congestion there. It's a doji, but what it is, is, is sometimes you can explain congestion. People always ask me, when is it okay to enter on congestion? When is it not? Well, you got to be able to read the chart and you got to understand what's going on. And it's really hard sometimes even when you're a good chart reader to know, but here it's pretty obvious. We came back inside the range and we tried to go higher again. We actually pushed through there a little bit, but they beat it back down and closed below it. And so there's still some buying going on there, but the sellers are starting to come back and, and overtake them again. So that's what's going on there. It's just resistance there and they can't trade through that. And that's what causes that bar. Now, if you understand that, if it was, closed in this bottom third you could say okay that's bearish i'm going to take that short even though that looks like congestion but it's not really a good enough setup to take here so it runs back down and what does it do it bounces it's very tempting to go long right there and you could i could mark i mean it's a triple test and look at that's that's what you call rejection right there so you could argue for that to be at least green but look at that it's 37 ticks and you got to go long right at the highs. It's just not worth risking. But when you get this higher low here, now you've got, I mean, it's still 25 ticks, but it's not 37. So uh, it's a little more manageable here. And it looks like we're going to, I mean, we're fixing to take off again. So I like that trade. And that pretty much confirms the trend line here. Uh, I need to adjust it. It's not. It doesn't quite show it touching there, but it probably needs to be adjusted just a hair. And I don't know if I adjusted it properly or not, but anyway. That turns out to be a great trade again. I mean, this is the thing, you know, you, sh you rock it down. What did I say? How many points did I say there was it? 20 something 27 almost 30 points and then you rock it right back up another let's see how many this is rock it right back up another 35 points it's just a crazy market right now um, and if you catch this one again you're you you probably don't get a runner on this trade because it would have it would have uh, you would have got your scalp and then it comes back and gets the break even. So depending on how you played it. Okay. But anyway, probably no runner on that trade. Uh, it's a really nice move though. Uh, we run up, we get a close outside. We run to a new high and then we got a channel running down. Uh, we get a close outside, move to a low and we bounce. And this, this was a triple test here. This is another one you could argue to at least be green, but it's very, con that's definitely congestion. So uh, you could easily break higher here and turn down. I doubt you could get in this trade because it gaps over and shoots up again. Anyway, uh, you'd have to ride this out back here and one that's trading that back far back down, I'd be scared of anyway. So you just wait a few minutes later you get this higher low and that's the safer entry and then it shoots straight on up again and this time you do get a runner and again this is a something like I mean, if you just run up to the first break uh, there's 10 points so uh, I mean that you, you get a lot of opportunities for some runners in this high volatility and uh, of course you get a close outside and you move high then you try to go higher once twice uh, you don't want to go short there. You're on the wrong side of the EMA. Uh, you may risk that back to the EMA if you've got room. It's another one. You could argue for it to be green. If you don't enter there, you don't really get a short enter entry. And then, of course, you get a first entry short there. And there's another lower high here, but you got to go short right into that. There's support right across there. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk going short right there into that. Uh, it does close below it, but then you don't have much room to the lows. And it does push through, but you don't know that it will. So I don't think you want to enter there either. And then, of course, you get this big bounce here. But that bar is way too big. If you entered that on the engulfing, maybe. But what, uh, And again, that's 
total rejection there. So that's another possibility. But I wouldn't dare go long up here, just especially with this inside bar, because technically this would be your signal bar now, the inside. And, and I mean, this bar's 46 ticks. It's crazy, 46 ticks. I can remember when you used to have to wait hours for, for the market to move 46 ticks. And then, of course, you get another pullback here that sets the trend line, but it's right into the highs again. But if you're just patient, a few minutes later, you get a first entry, second entry. Technically, I think it goes a tick higher, but that's still two legs back. Nice signal bar. It doesn't quite get back to the EMA, but this is, you know, this has been a strong market, a strong move up, and it's definitely an uptrend. And you'd probably be looking for a measured move up there. And so you're looking for price prices to come up to here anyway. You can see we made a perfect measured move almost. So that would have given you another reason to stay in this because you got your measured move from the two legs, the two larger legs. And then now you got a measured move on these two shorter legs. And so a lot of reasons to think about going long there. I don't think I would enter in here. There's another second entry right here. And it's another one you could consider. Um, there's plenty of room to get out there. So, I mean, I didn't mark it. It's a little aggressive, but there's another one you could consider. And you even got another one here. But now you've had a break and two legs up to a new high. And you met both measured moves. You already really met them here. But uh, I don't think I would go along right here. That bar, especially with that bar closing where it closed right there. And so he um, would have got burned if you went long right there. And that's that's the concern you've got. But now you've had the break in two legs up, so it's a little different than going long here or here. And notice we still make another run up. There's another high or low here, but no signal bar. You don't want to go long up here. And it runs right up to the other side of the blue channel and starts down. Uh, notice you get a first entry and then a second entry. And I don't know which way this bar broke first, I'll be honest with you. I think it broke lower, turned up, and then came back down. Um, either way, it's going to end up being congestion most likely. So I don't think you want to enter there even though it's a second entry. You couldn't enter below this bar because it's congestion. So unless it broke higher and made this new high and then turned down and came out, and then you might enter it. But I, I think it broke lower and went up and then came back down if I remember correctly um, so the only way you might take this trade is if it broke lower first because this doesn't qualify as a signal bar but this would and I don't think I'd wait till it closed because there's too much stem there and it's definitely congestion so you would have to enter it on the when it went past this bar and then if you just wait a minute, then you get a first entry, second entry. Now you got a failed second entry uh, long if it breaks lower there. And, of course, it does. It's a quick, easy move, but then it just kind of works sideways to back up again. And this is all just two sideways and congestion. Yeah, you might say, hey, there's a double test here. I, you can't really count that as a triple test. Uh, it just looks like a double bottom. And this actually made a little lower low on I'm pretty sure the low there is 68.50, and here I think it's 68 and a quarter. No, that's a per perfect double bottom. Uh, but the resistance is right there. We did push through here, but with it, those two bar matching highs, that scares me because uh, a lot of times it'll break higher and fail. So I'd wait, and if you wait a few more minutes, then you get the sure enough double test, because now you've made the low, you test it once, you test it twice, you get a nice signal bar, you got a little room back to the EMA, and you got a lot of room back to the other side of what looks like maybe a range setting up. And boom, it takes off, and you get a runner. I'd exit up here around this, especially when it couldn't go any higher. And then we're just still kind of chopping sideways here. I don't think you want to. Uh, there's a triple test on the short that you might have taken. I didn't mark it because this is an uptrend and everything's still above the midline on the blue channel. And you got possibility of this yellow channel setting up. Um, so I didn't mark that short, but it's another possibility right there. This was actually a triple test, but that's too congested and you're still above the EMA where here you get a 
a double test of that high right there. And notice how you're making lower highs each time, and this turns down. Um, you could enter it on the engulfing bar. With that being that bearish, I wouldn't be afraid to go short right there. And then, of course, it reverses real quick, makes a higher low, and goes or goes higher. But you can't go long right into that all that resistance there. And run up, you get a close outside of a new high, and, but you haven't reached the upper side yet. Notice it makes another move up, and when it finally does, now it tries to trade lower. And that's a possibility for a reversal right there, too. Um, it still looks a little sideways, and there's a little bit of support right across there. So I don't know that I'd trade that, but it's there. And, of course, you bounce off the midline, and then you get a reversal down here. And look at that bar. I like going long right there. Now, again, this is another one. I don't know if it broke higher or lower first. I'd wait for that to close. Because then it's not an inside bar, and it's not a... Even though it's an engulfing bar, it, it it makes a new low, and it closes almost on its high. So you got a little bit more information on the failure yet. Technically, when it broke above this level right here, it was a failure. But I wouldn't enter till this bar runs up, and it just again you're finding resistance up here. Again, we did just just came off the top, so you need a trap to go along because we're probably going back to the other side. That's how strong this market was. Even though we're doing a lot of sideways stuff, it's just because the buyers are still there. This has been a really a pretty strong move because we've been in this upper side of this big blue two-tiered channel since 10 o'clock this morning. And here it is. One o'clock in the afternoon, we're still above it. We finally shoot below it at a little before two o'clock. But it makes another run up. I don't see anything I'd want to trade there. Um, you might say, hey, there's a reversal right there. But after just coming off the top and now being back below the EMA, I don't think I'm going to take that because we're not looking for a reversal necessarily here. We run down. We get a close outside this yellow channel now. And that is a second entry long. Notice the new high. First entry runs on down and second entry. And this actually broke lower first and turned up way away from the EMA. I like going long there just to try to ride it back to the EMA and maybe you make a new high which you do and of course it runs up to the midline and then you're kind of chopping around and there's another reversal but that's that's way too congested and uh, it's hard to know you would think prices were going higher so it's really not a place you want to try to get short again and then Right before we go into 2.30, you get another failed second entry short. Again, it's a big bar, and you got to go long way up here, and it's real late in the day. I mean, it's I mean, 18 ticks. I mean, that's small compared to some of them. But you can see, notice the new low, and then first entry, second entry. So when it breaks higher right there, it's a failure. And so you may take that one. Would have been a nice trade. And that's what I saw today. I mean, it's clearly a fairly strong trend, even though it, it there's a lot of choppiness to it. It makes it so that makes it a little harder to trade. And really, what you got to do is you just each one of these trends, you got to draw your short-term stuff and just kind of let it play out. And you got to kind of stick to the rules. And if you do, I mean, you get some. There's a lot of green ones in there because it's just hard to read this stuff. I mean, you know that we're probably going higher because of the blue channel and the fact that it's an uptrend day. But when it's just reversing and running all over the place, the only thing you can do is draw these micro trends and follow the rules on them and hope they hold up. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't on micro trends. But if you look at them today, most of them did hold up. And then when you get inside the, uh, the little range areas, just play the range rules. That's all you can do there. So anyway... I'm going to wrap it up, and we'll be back again to do it tomorrow and wrap up our week. Tomorrow's Thursday. No chart lessons on Fridays anymore. So um, I'll see you tomorrow, And but I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.